Samantha doesn't have a microphone, so she's not. Oh no! She's not ignoring me. She just can't communicate. Yeah, I think she was saying she couldn't do anything because she's not a host. I'm not sure who the host is tonight, but. Try logging off and rejoining as somebody else. <laughs> huh. He says in the chat that uh, you could try making a co host. Okay. We may be going live fairly soon. Uh, if you check the chat window, um, Samantha will let us know when we're live. Well, welcome everybody to the uh, uh, Environmental Commission meeting. And uh, let me call the meeting to order. And tonight we're having a, uh, a uh, project update from uh, Davis Coy, who is the building and grounds manager for Montessori Radmore. They got a grant from the township. Uh, and uh, Davis is gonna tell us uh, if we can figure out how to do the screen sharing, uh, what, uh, where he's at. And all the stuff that they've done. So uh, uh, have we worked out the screen sharing or is that still a work in progress? Um, I think we can, uh, I think it should work now. Okay, Davis, you have the floor. Okay, well, uh, what I, pictures of the signs that we are going to put up but start with the overview where uh the uh, what, what we did with the grant was it was basically a two-part thing that we did at Montessori um the first part was to improve our existing greenhouse which was in uh it's heavily used by students and staff and um it was just starting to get really run down and really overgrown and uh, needed a lot of work and a lot of improvements so we used uh some of uh, the the grant funds for that and then the other part was our pathway to discovery, which is a really, it's a, um, it's a nature trail that encircles the entire campus. Uh, we have a, just under 10 acres and it uh, goes, we have three basic ecosystems on our campus, uh, open fields and woods wow. and in uh, a marshland. I use uh, that to promote um, uh, educational or, or environmental learning for, with, the, with the children and uh, develop some educational signage along the way that the kids could use and the teachers could use for uh, lessons. Um, and the, the teachers do go outside with the kids quite a bit. And we have kids from toddler age all the way up through sixth grade. Uh, so we, we've also, uh, we're trying to remove a bunch of invasive species and we, we've, we've utilized the, the opinion, uh, advice of naturalists and uh, arborists and the Audubon Society to try to, to see what we can do with our with our little slice of heaven. And um, they all said we tried to, you know, uh, raise the canopy, lower the floor and really make a focus on removing invasive species and start planting um, uh, native plants. And we've we uh, bought quite a few plants. Uh, we've established some shade gardens and um, and uh, plant, planted a bunch of trees with the kids, saplings, you know, small trees. And uh, we've, we've really had a good time with it. Um, uh, the deer ate some. <laughs> uh, <laughs> most, most lived, some died, you know. We've, we've, we've done a lot. A lot of our native plants uh, did really, really well. The native shade gardens look great. Um, and uh, the, the signs, which, which are a big chunk of that, pathway to discovery are still in development but they are close to being done 
Um, I will try to share the screen. I don't know if we, oh, it looks like we can. Um, I have never done this before, so I'm probably going to be terrible at it. Um, I will give it a try. All right. Uh, let's see. Can you see that? <laughs> no, shoot. Um, take your time. If anyone else is listening and they can promote Bill to a panelist, that would be helpful. Sorry, a bit of clumsiness going on on my end here. Not a problem. You want to try that again, Leroy? I'll, um, I'll see if I can hit the right button this time. Oh, I think I figured it out. All right. So the, uh, there, oh. can you see that? We are good. <laughs> All right, so this would be sign number one. This is our uh, welcome sign. We had a custom, um, I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, this is the path that encircles the entire campus. And there'll be a QR code on each uh, screen where they can, or each sign where they can, the teachers can put content on, on the internet and they can actually have lessons on there. And this is our greenhouse sign. Um, and we're trying to, to oops, uh, have learning material actually on each screen, things that are already a part of their lessons um, things that are age appropriate for all uh, of our age groups on campus. Um, so that is one. All right. It's amazing. It's awesome. Yes, and it, that's it's the signs. Uh, we're, 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 can you see this one, the new one? Um, I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. <laughs> yes, uh, Steve. Yeah, we're on to mammals now. Oh, we are? Okay. Um, then now I lost it. <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. Give me one second here. Totally fine. There yeah, would be no grade. Those are really good looking signs. Yes. And a we yeah. tried to, um, to use, uh, locally sourced, um, uh, uh, uh vendors too um so this these signs are done by uh we we used a printing company that we've used before johnson printing in lansing and we've um uh we were so fortunate that so many of our vendors gave us deals and so <laughs> uh, um a lot uh wild type gave us deals uh go go grow and um charlotte gave us a bunch of free trees meridian township gave us some free trees um and uh that that was really really fun so and miss jackie here took pictures of all these fun guy right here um on our <laughs> campus and so we're um we're trying to really show the kids you know what we have on our campus is, is important and you can learn from it and and you can take it with you and um jackie has a lot of uh uh um farm to table um things in, in her greenhouse curriculum uh, that the kids do uh and um so we have amphibians wetlands we we we're on a marsh but uh we you know um uh let's see here <laughs> um yeah so we have 14 signs. This is one of the best ones. This is a three foot sign and this is, will be on our observation deck. And so the kids will actually sit with our, with teachers and our head of school and they can identify all the birds and we'll have binoculars. And it's just a really, really fun thing. Um, things that we've been really excited about um, starting. And we have, uh, uh, we are building bat houses right now with, with the children that we're going to put up right before, hopefully before the snow flies. And um, <laughs> this, <laughs> uh, this, uh, this sign will be right under it. And um, so we've, we've really, we really worked hard on this. Um, and uh, we're, we're pretty pleased with the results. Now we just got to get them into the ground. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and as Davis was saying, in Montessori, it's really important for the children to recognize that the classroom is 
like an extension into the outdoors. So from toddler, they will go and they will harvest flowers or harvest greens and take back the greens. That's actually one thing we did with the grant was I was really excited to make like a pet garden area where uh, there's greens and different kind of things that the guinea pigs and we have, we have all sorts of stuff. We have like mice, <laughs> mice, rats, guinea pigs, dagoos, snakes, um, where the children can go with their little basket, even when they're only two years old and go and collect the greens and bring it back. I don't, I don't know if they necessarily connect the farm to table, but going into primary, then we actually have like the botany nomenclature that the kids use and they start to talk about the parts of the plant, the parts of the leaf. And that kind of carries over into elementary where we get so picky that we start talking about like dicot, monocot, not just regular stamen and pistils, but actually trying to find like a stamen and pistil of like a zinnia that's not as easy as maybe a nasturtium and realizing that maybe recently pumpkins are berries. So there, that was a good debate in the classroom of whether a pumpkin was a vegetable or fruit. And the children are always going to argue about, oh, well, it has seeds. Well, it's a little bit more than that. So going out into the greenhouse and actually collecting, like we have dumpling squash right now, collecting that, dissecting the actual flower that they could grab from the greenhouse, bringing it back to the classroom, pinning it on the little botany table, putting it underneath the microscope, and actually figuring out why it's a berry has been, it's been so cool for the kids to actually be able to use the greenhouse more than they were able to use before. And every classroom composts too. And so we have a composting and brush pile sign to try to teach them, you know, right from a young age, just small little things that you can do for environmental sustainability and how you can keep things out of the landfill and how they can be, you know, how they matter, you know, um, but everyone's got to do those little things. And so that's what we're trying to promote. <laughs> yeah, the composting too trying to teach the kids to keep a clean compost area and that it can be successful and not just this gross thing and understanding how much it does build up, how much mm -hmm. every single thing that we throw away actually will build up. It's been, it's been a great journey. And I want to say that a lot of this has actually been kind of instigated because of the grant that we got from you guys. We were able to do like a ton of stuff that we wanted to you know well i and think i think have... i think we increased the uh square foot or the plantable square footage of the um greenhouse almost doubled it so oh that was dramatically really i am so thankful <laughs> we're able to grow actually right now even though it's cold i've been telling davis i need to pull these tomato plants out because i need to plant the winter crops because we actually we grow year round like we have the kids go out in the snow pull back the plastic and water the kale and these tomato plants just keep growing still and keep giving us tomatoes. So I'm going to keep holding on for those. But we have so many more plants now because of the bigger space that we have to grow. Yeah. Fantastic. So, well, it's so great to see uh, some of these ideas that we bounce around uh, bearing fruit, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> so thank you so much for coming. And uh, any questions for these folks or comments? Well, why don't you uh, tell us a little about your future plans? Um, for the greenhouse, that's just going to keep expanding. Uh, they do, um, they've been doing plant sales for years to try to uh, um, uh, raise funds for future, for seeds and things like that that you would purchase. Um, we are going to continue to um, grow our, our, our natural areas. We're trying to promote green and what that means. Um, our, some of our future plans, or at least mine, um, uh, uh, we, we, we've noticed that we, we don't have a lot of forest diversity, so we really want to start trying to, um, uh, did I freeze here? Um, we really want to start trying to, to increase, um, native, uh, plants and the diversity of, we're going to start labeling at kid high, a lot of the mature trees so they can say, oh, that, you know, a red maple, that's Acer root. You know, and and know their Latin names, which I know the el upper elementary kids already do. Um, we have a lot of look and listen stations where the kids sit and try to identify animals. And one fun thing that we're going to try to do, maybe even this winter, is um, uh, 
uh, trail cameras on the pathway to discovery. So it, it actually show what animals are using that trail when people aren't around. And so that's all of that stuff is going to be within it six months to a year. So that's really fun. We also um, started kind of our orchard finally. So Davis yes. and I really <laughs> wanted to get going with an orchard, but I'm always like, well, you know that that does invite deer to our property in which they're going to eat things. <laughs> However, yeah. I'm, I'm very much into the farm to table and cooking with the kids because as they go into the elementary program, they actually do something called community lunch every month. And we center that maybe around what the greenhouse has. So last month they made um, huge, huge crock pots of tomato soup. And I taught them how to make a sourdough bread and the, <laughs> the love and the time it takes to get into making sourdough bread. And we cook all vegan just for allergies and whatnot. But they were actually able to make enough tomato soup for all the teachers, all the students, and with all of the tomatoes from the greenhouse and not having to purchase anything whatsoever because I teach them to save it, like carve out the stem and everything. We put them in the freezer, we package them, and then we can pull them out. And, you know, the kids are like, oh, they're so gross. And I'm like, you guys, these are basically just like cans of stewed tomatoes. So we were able to kind of start our orchard. Davis and I want to expand on the orchard, hopefully. We're, so we're also look, looking at... Um... And we've Jackie and I have tossed this idea around for a long time, but um, having a actual kind of barnyard where it shows all the major crops that that uh, that, that the American farmers make. So you got alfalfa and corn and soybeans and just in little plots, so kids can actually see what this looks like, how it's harvested, and how it's you know how it's used. And um, you know we already do some of that, but we're going to do it in smaller areas. And we do have a very large resident deer population and we can't <laughs> fence off everything. So we, we do know that some things are going to just go, but uh, you know, we're going to do our best. <laughs> but those crops are, in my opinion, important to teach to the children because maybe they're not something that you go and you grab, but it also is putting nutrients back into the soil. So you can't just deplete the soil constantly. You have to learn how to actually have it rest, do a cover crop, do a grain crop in between, you know, a legume and whatnot, and actually able, you're able to have healthy soil health, which is huge for sustainability. And the children, what, what they kind of get confused about is they think, oh, there's dirt everywhere. Why don't we use this to plant our, our seeds? And why do we have to bag, buy bags of dirt? And you have to kind of explain to them that soil health is huge huge and how you actually can create good soil so that's that's huge on our list too do, do any of the commissioners have questions or comments bill go ahead yeah i'm gonna leave my uh, video off i'm sorry I, I seem to be contributing to the to the bad quality here um but um i, I wanted to comment that uh earlier today several of us, several of us were in a, a discussion that uh, had tones of that kind of very adult, good grief, there's so many problems, so many environmental problems in the world, and they're all so complicated and, and complex and wicked, and how are we going to address them? There's so many barriers, and it's just so refreshing to see uh, a program that's training, um, teaching, educating uh, the next generation about uh, these really important principles and uh, coming at things from that, that uh, exploratory learning angle is just so, so important. Um, personally, I've been spending a lot of time thinking about diversifying uh, uh, trees in, in Michigan and, and uh, native trees. And I've been thinking more and more about edible nuts. And of course, I'm not the first person to think about this. There's a lot of stuff out there, um, people doing really interesting stuff and Leroy knows some of them. And so that may be another thing to consider in, in what sounds like a, a wonderful uh, plan you got going on here. Thank you. We have considered uh, the, the nut trees are something we've talked extensively about. The ex problem is we do have allergies that we need to consider. So yeah. when we do plant them, they will probably be a, a, a farther way on um, some green space that we haven't utilized yet. Hazelnuts are a big one because um, uh, 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 that we would like to get going, but mm -hmm. um you know, we, we've got to be careful. Jackie and her students have actually tried to get pawpaw growing very, very patiently and very uh, with limited <laughs> success. But, you know, the, the, we are trying to get as many different representations of native species and, and food, food sources that, that, that 
you know, you can put in your own backyard and, and, and make use of. Tom, go ahead. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Sorry about that. Um, thank you, John. I, I was just curious as how large of an area do you have devoted to your pathway and, and these types of activities? The, the, uh, our whole campus right now is just under 10 acres, uh, and that includes some, some marshland, um, and that, uh, uh, you know, that also includes, obviously, our parking lot and driveway. Um, the greenhouse, is, uh, is uh, its footprint is roughly 21 by 21, and it's plenty big for us, um, and we have cold boxes on the outside, and then uh, this, this future orchard barnyard that Jackie and I are pushing for uh, will probably be another 50 to 100 by 100 area. Um, the pathway itself pretty much travels the, the perimeter or, or at least through most of our property. Um, it's uh, some of it's mature forest, a lot of it is thicket and a lot of it is um, uh, things like um, buckthorn that need to go. Um, if you're not familiar with buckthorn, I hate it. <laughs> uh, it. We have a bad garlic mustard problem. So we're, we're also using this pathway to point out things and like this is, you know, this is something that you guys need to look for at your house. If you see it, you got to pull it, you know. Um, and, but it does, it does occupy quite a bit of space uh, or, or in, in circumference. One thing Davis and I are very lucky about is our anyone that's ahead of us, like our administrators, Davis and I are always like, hmm, do you think we can make room for this? <laughs> and usually if we have the funds and the equipment, they let us. Like recently I've talked them into letting me grow a little shiitake area in the back forest. And I just applied for a grant to get bees on the property. So even though like they were like bees, you're going to put bees, but I was able to kind of talk to them about putting it in a spot that would be safe and honeybees aren't out to sting anybody but you have to convince people who think otherwise so mm -hmm. we're very lucky that with the 10 acres although some is not you're not able to do much on it still hosts animals and we're really able to kind of make new ways thanks to davis for clearing a lot to put new projects together kendra i think you have a question go ahead thank you um it's wonderful to hear about your project and uh, getting kids connected to the earth and, um, you know, caring for it and all the wildlife and just getting back, you know, connected to nature because that's really missing sometimes um, and getting them invested. Uh, I just wanted to comment. I haven't seen your campus before. It sounds very interesting having 10 acres. And I was wondering if you were familiar with um, our wetland outreach campaign. It sounds like you have wetlands on the property. We're working on a build back the buffer um, campaign and also um, you know, kind of addressing issues related to flooding. So I don't know if you have any of those issues on your campus, but I just want to let you know if you weren't aware that those are topics that we're certainly working on in the Vernon Commission. Yeah, um, we've, our, our, our wetland is, is a little bit more of a marsh than a, uh, than than something that floods a lot. Uh, it, it, um, we, we do have some drainage issues, but they're not usually as a result of the wetland. They're more a result of uh, uh, bad sidewalks. Um, but uh, uh, we do try to, uh, to make a point uh, of, of watersheds and uh, talk to the kids about, about that. And everything that goes on the ground is going to end up in the, in, a, in the water somewhere. Um, so, uh, you know, we don't fertilize our, our lawn. We don't put pesticides on it either. And I would love to, you know, if you, once these signs finally go in the ground, I would love you guys to come on over and take a walk around with us and check it out. Yes. That'd be great. Uh, Ned, do you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to come back to, to Jackie's comment about bees. I, the grade school that I went to, uh, way back 10,000 years ago in Massachusetts, we had a we had a hive that was actually built, you know, kind of like those um, ant farms. That was basically a, a pair of uh, plexiglass windows with you know wooden structure for to support the combs in between. But it was actually inside our the school's library, and it had the access that went out through the window. Um, the bees, you know, would just come and go and do their thing, and. Uh, it was it was wonderful. You'd sit there and watch them doing their living their lives, 
and they didn't bother anybody. And one time we actually had a wonderful swarm and our science teacher took us out and we could actually put our hands on the swarm because it's they're totally passive. Uh, they're basically wrapping around the queen and keeping her warm, but, but it, was, uh, it was the size of a pumpkin hanging on a tree. And uh, that was just, a, that's an experience I will never forget. So I, I recommend it. <laughs> that is so awesome, Ned. My, uh, my students last year, my stepdad's a beekeeper and he uh -huh. Zoomed with us and kind of answered a lot of questions. They did reports. But the students since then have been so interested and they're really like, can we get bees? Do you think Mr. Joe would let us get bees? And I saw something for this grant that I applied to about doing that internal structure for the kids just to sit and observe, because that's a lot with monastery. You, they observe even like the guinea pigs, like they sit, they see how it scratches and what it eats and how often it moves. So I hope, I hope that that can come to fruition because I think it would be so beautiful for our school. And we are very open to any educational opportunities that that uh, you you guys have in the works, or that there's a, a you know outreach for. Um, we our kids love that stuff. We uh, Jackie is uh, is I don't know if it's you or or Christine that knows the bat person, the bat expert, but we are hoping to get someone on campus to talk about the bats after we get the sun. You know, we're building houses right now. Um, you know, we are trying to, uh, we are from now on, I think we are ready at green school, but we're pushing towards doing that and making sure the kids know all, all that it takes to be a, a green school and, you know, reduce your waste. And, um, you know, we would love to, uh, I think I talked to you, Leroy, about uh, solar panels and the solar initiative, things like that. Um, you know, we, we are interested in promoting our campus for all those environmental um, uh, avenues and because teach them young, you know, and mm -hmm. make it important. Kendra, go ahead. I'm, I'm grateful to hear that because um, part of our um, role as a commission is to, um, you know, teach particularly about natural resources, but certainly wetlands and reaching out to the community schools and teaching about the importance of protecting them. Um, which we'll talk about some fun facts later on related to them, but um, that might be fun uh, for your students to learn. And, um, you know, certainly wetlands help with flooding, you know, and so, and having those buffers will certainly help with that too. So, um, you know, we're working on that and we're, we're looking for places that have a lot of eyes um, that can see things to educate the community. So it's great, um, you know, we're happy to, I'm certainly happy to help you. And Oh, please, efforts. love to tromp around in there. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments or questions? I just um, was thinking about the the bee observing the bees from the inside, and it occurs to me: does does Fenner have one of those? Does anyone know? I have some. I, I know Michigan Michigan Bug House does, okay. um, but I don't know about Fenner. Okay, I I I'll only bring it up if you know if it's useful to you all for a, a model of how someone else may be doing it uh, locally. Any other uh, questions or comments? Uh, Courtney. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, just uh, for Davis and Jackie, your excitement is infectious. That's fantastic. As the board liaison, um, this is really exciting exciting how much you've done with quite honestly a little bit of money <laughs> you said all you need are some funds and uh in uh in some buy-in so this is it, it, it's fantastic I, I mean the education that you're using is very tactile I mean this is the Montessori way right but it's very tactile and like you said you have to um you, you introduce this very young and kids just absorb it and they just model it. And um, the fact that you're using so many various environmental issues um, to accommodate all that you're doing, it's just, it's very exciting. And um, so I'm very proud that um, that you're a part of our grant program. I, um, I, I did wanna say that um, we do, and Leroy, I hope I'm not overstepping, but we did appropriate additional funds for this upcoming fiscal year. And um, so I would encourage you, if in fact you need additional funds to do 
more work um, to at least to apply to the green grants for the upcoming year as well. Um, and another thing I'd like to ask, and if you're if you're willing um, to present all that you've done to the board of trustees, as they um, that it's important that they hear all the work you've done. Um, you know that they're the ones that appropriate the funding. The environmental commission is the one that certainly. Um, is the advocates for all of this type of work, and um, it's it's it would be great for them to hear all the work you've done. So I, I invite you to do that. I can um, certainly work with Leroy to get you on the agenda, um, so that everybody can hear everybody out, even outside the environmental world, <laughs> can hear all this that you've done and how important it is for um, for the young to um, to learn so early and. We've got, three student um, representatives on this board at a high school level that um, have been integral in getting our message across um, in, in multiple in multiple avenues. So I just want to say thank you and I'm um, very excited. So are we. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Well, Davis and Jackie, thank you very much for coming. This has been very enlightening and uh, uh, you've done obviously a great project and uh, I'm sure the Board of Trustees will be uh, uh, happy to kind of hear about it. Uh, so uh, we look forward to kind of working with you in the future. Hey, yes, please. And uh, you have my email, please send me any kind of outreach information you have and I would love to schedule if you if you give talks to kids. Um, Please uh, let let us know. We love stuff like that. So, if you're willing to send along your um, your signs, um, I'd be happy to share that with the group. Um, and now that you're a professional on Zoom, I'm sure your board, <laughs> board presentation will be top notch. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you again. Thank you so much, you guys. Bye now. Well, the first oh, item. First item for us to deal with is the approval of the agenda. And uh, I, I believe, uh, Leroy, correct me if I'm wrong, that we're basically this time doing a consent agenda, which I think means that we've incorporated into the minutes all those updates that uh, we, we did on the, the Google page or wherever where it is. Uh, and I found that very helpful because I, I did kind of uh, check to see all the updates that were there. And so we'll still have an opportunity for anybody who wants to uh, highlight something or elaborate something when we get down to uh, commissioner and staff updates. But I think Val's idea of kind of having a consent agenda uh, will probably help us uh, have more time for uh, discussion and kind of dealing with various issues. So with, with that, let me get a, uh, I'd like to have a motion to, to adopt the agenda. And if anybody wants to add anything to the agenda, uh, that Valerie, I, by the way, I'm, I'm assuming that we're talking about Lake Lansing, uh, under the timely environmental topics. That's been a, a, a topic of much discussion during the past, uh, weeks, I guess. And, uh, let's see, but is there anything, we have Valerie, I believe made a motion to approve the agenda, but also, is there anything that anybody wants to add to the agenda? I forgot that. Yeah. Kendra. Is it a second or you want to add something? No, I'm going to add. I just want to say um, timely environmental um, issues is, you know, an agenda item that I think we should have ongoing. But for this month, I think um, every month would be something different. And here um, I would suggest we talk about Lake Lansing and also flooding with the ongoing rains that we have. Um, additionally, I'm noticing in the minutes from last month that there's no mention of us talking about flooding. Um, and I know that most certainly I spoke about flooding and Ned spoke about flooding last month. And so I want that to be reflective in the minutes. So okay. Thank okay. You. Well, we'll be getting to that. Uh, so, uh, let's see, uh, do I have a second for the, uh, approval of the agenda? Thank you, Courtney. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, all in, in favor of approving the agenda, please raise your hand. Is okay. Uh, is anybody opposed? Okay. Moving right along. Now we're approval of the minutes and uh, Kendra has suggested making some additions to the minutes, which is uh, uh, great. We'll do that. And so is there any other additions to the minutes that uh, people would like to make or corrections? Okay, I don't see any. Uh, would somebody like to make a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, thank you, Anna. Okay, Tom, would you like to second that? Okay. Sure. 
No, okay, all in favor of approving the minutes, please raise your hand. Okay, any opposed? Okay. Okay, we're moving on to uh, public remarks now. And uh, I guess Samantha would know if anybody's called in, uh, but uh, uh, do we have anybody who's kind of uh, contacted us who wants to make public remarks? Okay, I guess not. Okay, uh, moving under new business, uh, we're gonna have a regular uh, addition to the agenda of timely environmental topics. I think that's a great idea. And so let's first talk about uh, Lake Lansing. Uh, and uh, Valerie, could you just give us a little background to get the discussion going? Uh, you have to unmute yourself though. There you go. So the, yeah, so the past week we had the uh, announcement that the lake had the um, blue green toxic algae and that it was tested and indeed it was there and now I guess it's kind of dissipated but um, it seemed like an ideal opportunity to talk about the importance of what we do on our yard and uh, in our driveway the the stuff that we use and what gets on the yard in in the Lake Lansing watershed and how on big rains, it can just get all flushed down to that lower level, which is Lake Lansing that's sitting there like a bucket to collect it all um, and the damage it causes. And although the blue green algae that uh, is temporary and maybe it's in other lakes and um, I, I think it's ref reflective of a, a perhaps conditions in the lake that are um, already compromised and there's things maybe that we can do to make it healthier. Um, and so, and it really fits in with Kendra and all your hard effort on uh, on our, you know, stormwater and wetlands and so forth. So it seemed like a great opportunity because so many people use the lake. They know the lake, they love the lake. It's the only lake we got really. So um, we could do a bunch of little stuff to make it better. And uh, so that's what the discussion was about. Yeah, and the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the algae, uh, not that that wouldn't be a problem, but uh, apparently that also created some toxic uh, bacteria, right? That uh, so basically it led to a, uh, a warning by the public health folks that they, nobody should be swimming in there and, you know, that it was uh, uh, a danger to people and animals. And so that uh, uh, was kind of a, no swimming for a while which lasted for a while. So that was kind of talk about a red flag. Um, right, and le lethal to pets that, that could drink it, you know, so it's not a good thing. Not, it certainly equals unhealthy altogether. Well, Ned, go ahead. So uh, we live out there on Lake Lansing and uh, the um, a couple of things. One is, of course, let's not forget that we actually do did, uh, it's years ago now, but we had, we were involved in, um, um, trying to forbid the sale of phosphorus containing uh, fertilizers in the township, but then the state came along and made that illegal anyway. Uh, and so our activities were, were superseded by that. Uh, but it is strictly speaking, not, some, not allowed to apply phosphorus uh, containing, phosphate containing uh, fertilizers to lawns around the lake or anywhere, um, which doesn't mean that we don't get phosphate in the uh, in the runoff, of course. But the other thing is that um, that yeah you know, that algae uh, it, it tends to concentrate sort of downwind because it floats, um, and so it was concentrating on the sort of north uh, what would I say northeast corner of the lake. Um, and to be honest, it's kind of disappeared. I don't that doesn't say the toxin is totally gone, but um, it's, it's the same stuff that. So, so it's strictly speaking a bacterium, but they, but it's commonly called blue green algae, and it's the same stuff that um, made Toledo have to uh, essentially bring in water from the outside because their their water supply was from Lake Erie and and uh, was contaminated by that stuff. So, yeah, apparently it's associated with you know sort of damp and warm periods, and the question is, is it something our lake 
uh, you know, is it is it sort of a consequence of you know bigger shifts in our behavior or in our climate situation, or is it just does it just happen to be what happened this summer? And of course, that's always the question with any um, environmental sort of weather style issue. Uh, so yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's as far as I've we've been on the lake for 30 plus years, and and that's the first year that I'm aware that it's been an issue. E. coli has been an issue other years, but not that. Hmm. Okay, Valerie. Well, I, um, the phosphate, uh, um, you know, there uh, there's studies that are done on the water. I don't know if it's every year, or, uh, but um, they were they were elevated this year, were they not? I mean, the, I read the report that was not the latest, but was a recent one. Um, the, uh, I was particularly interested in the, there was a Lake Lansing management, pretty extensive report, I thought, that was done by a lot of people, a lot of different entities got together to write that, and it's posted on the, on the Meridian Township Lake Lansing Advisory Committee site, and, you know, it was talking about elevated uh, phosphorus then, um, as well as nitrates, and, you know, and who knows what contaminants if people you know, dump stuff in their, in their yards, or even lake owners that may, I mean, you know, I heard the story secondhand, but that, um, you know, people cleaning out their, their uh, fire pits that they use for recreational purposes and throwing that in the lake, which, which I, you know, that, that would not be good. There'd be a lot of bad stuff in that. And, and just the organic matter, um, you know, it's increasing, I mean, I've seen, we've only been there four years and the water was pretty clear when we got there. And I, and some people say, yeah, well, that, that's when we had the, whatever the invasive thing was. That... It was the zebra mussels. The zebra mussels cleared it up a bit. And then the zebra mussels had went through a dip, but now they're back again this year. It's, well, it's maybe a little get, different every year. Maybe it'll get clean again. Um, yeah. But the, the point is stuff is getting in there. I mean, it, it, it could be from the wind or it could be, I don't know, somebody's, I mean, we're using it probably innocently. I mean, you can still buy it. You can still buy the fertilizer that's the 12, 12, 12 or whatever it is. Um, and I think by law, I did a quick read of it and it said, uh, you know, you can still use it and, and farmers can use it and you can use it on specific trees and stuff, but you shouldn't be using it as a general fertilizer in your yard. Um, where can where can you buy it? Because I thought that Home Depot and all the big stores um, basically had stopped, uh, you know, that the, the they were, uh, they weren't selling it anyway, and then, um, and then we ended up saying it, it. They couldn't do it at all. Um, uh, yeah, I've seen it around. You can uh, buy the okay. unbranded twelve, twelve, twelve stuff. Um, but uh, you know, maybe it's just an educational thing. Maybe it needs to be backed up with a little bit of tweaking of ordinances. I don't know. I, I, I also read, you know, more carefully. Not every, not all our ordinances, but. It, there's also a pretty lengthy list about what not to put in your yard or hard dump, you know. Right. But um, but I think probably that's more out of you know not knowing, you know, right. not knowing people had a better idea. And there's a whole litany of things that we could be doing better, including uh, um, you know, in the lake when they when they harvest the weeds, they harvest the weeds twice a year, I guess now, and they and sometimes they come floating up in masses to the shoreline. And it's good to take those out because that's organic matter. And I understand some people kind of push them back out to sea, hoping they, you know, they don't want to deal <laughs> with them. So, you know, there's all that kind of stuff that that could be helpful. I'm sorry, Leroy, I'll cut it off here. Well, I have the right. Do you have a, a question? Um, just, just briefly, I appreciate this. I, I love this concept of an ongoing timely environmental topics because that's, of course, the media, the public are more tuned into our agenda. At least some of the things we've been developing. So we have the wetland brochure and we have a new fall yard care tips um, piece that have involved many of you in the production. And a lot of the, the suggestions in both of those uh, publications kind of relate to some of these small things that we can each do to make an impact on nutrients entering the ecosystem. So I would encourage, just invite you, um, we are sort of, uh, we all have opportunities through social media or through our existing organizations to share this information. And so you can help us 
kind of be the answer to the question that we have is how do we get the word out about those small things that we can do and um, uh, certainly home TV is helpful but they're also quite overloaded so um, as a green neighbor or as a someone in your congregation or your neighborhood you can help kind of spread this timely opportunities but how we package this information with these timely environmental issues is still a question so um, it's almost like uh, tweaking things as we go to to frame it in a way that relates to the timely issue, but also to the the audience that you are helping to reach. Yeah, uh, if I can figure out how to lower my hand, I will be happy. Oh, <laughs> I think Kendra had raised her hand too. Kendra, uh, thank you. I just echo what Leroy is saying. You know, we had the. Um, you know, wetland brochure and wetland letter that went out to folks, um, you know, adjacent or on wetlands. And I don't know how many of the Lake Lansing residents ended up getting that, but I know I sent that letter out multiple places and I don't know if it's getting to that folks, but a lot of information that's in that brochure um, does apply and would be helpful to the, the Lake Lansing folks. So, um, you know, I think it's just a matter of bringing everybody to the table. And that's something that we've talked about many times before is, you know, protecting our watershed, um, how many places and how many boards or commissions at the township are involved in, like, say, wetlands or watershed or something like that, right? And how can we bring everybody to the table um, to kind of discuss the issues at hand and, and help everyone with some simple do's and simple don'ts and through education? And I guess that's kind of what I'm thinking about in relationship to this and appreciate um, Valerie's passion um, and Ned's, you know, um, knowledge and expertise and, you know, everyone's uh, on board with this because it, it really is. And I think we can't ignore like the amount of flooding we've had, right? So Lake Lansing and flooding, you know, that part goes together. Like, um, I think Valerie sent out, a, at least to me, I'm not sure she sent to everybody, um, a report from like, I think it was like 2001 in relationship to Lake Lansing and with all these helpful hints of things to do. Um, to help the, the lake be healthy. And, you know, a lot of that was put in ordinances, um, but folks aren't just aware of those ordinances, you know? So I think that's where it's our job to some degree to help educate people on that and the ways to go about doing it. I don't know that I know all that, the ways to do that, but I'm hoping we can put our minds together and help. Well, you know, Kendra related to kind of convening uh, folks that, uh need to kind of be talking about these issues uh, in the process of doing the uh, uh, developing and uh, the wetland education campaign. And I know that's ongoing. I assume a number of the actors, maybe not all of them have already been kind of convened together to talk about the education campaign, right? Yes, a number of folks from the township for sure, you know, a number of different departments from the township. I mean, you know, we've got engineering, we've got um, you know, land preservation parks, we've, you know, Leroy, we've got, you know, some planning folks, like we have those folks, but we, we don't have is the commission, you know, the boards and commissions, like, like the Lake Lansing Advisory Board, or, um, I mean, we have land press, but, um, you know, like, uh, you know, the planning commission, you know, I, I think anyone that touches and has to do with this, we needed to have a conversation like this with everyone on board and hearing the same information. And I'm not even sure that all the information went out to the township staff, you know, about what these, you know, in relationship to the wetland ordinance and all of that kind of stuff and the simple do's and simple don'ts. So, um, so to answer your question, very long-windedly, very sorry. Several township folks are involved. I don't think the boards and commissions are involved. Okay. It sounds like that maybe they could be invited to future meetings and try to rope them in, but uh, Anna, uh, go ahead. Yes, thank you, um, Valerie, for bringing this up. And, and Kendra, you mentioned something. So you mentioned educating on the ordinances and it occurs to me that, you know, Valerie also sent in some of, in one of her emails, some potential suggestions of ordinance changes or crafting new ordinances. So I, one, I didn't want that to get lost if, if it, this is a, a you know, a point of, dis I don't know if it's a point of discussion for today. Um, two, I would say as a newer um, com commissioner, it, it would be helpful for me to get a sense, you know, I know that is one of our, you know, of our 
tasks or one of the things that as a commission that that we're tasked to do is is to advise on things like ordinances so i i guess i'm just not sure what the the process is or when we get involved in, in that type of work so um i think that could be helpful for me to kind of get a better understanding of what that process is for advising on different ordinances and then also just bring up that that Valerie had sent an email about that and maybe um and is it a time to discuss that now well you know i'll tell you my reaction too because you know some of the uh, city of east lansing is a good example was more specific in some of the things that uh, uh, their environmental commission was asked to do uh we, we had language which was very broad which i think to me at least means that everything that east lansing talked about we can do in fact we could be kind of we have like a very broad mandate uh part of the, the struggle of course with any commission like us that has such a broad mandate is what do we work on because environment obviously is in the zillion issues uh, it's lots of uh, uh wicked problems to deal with uh the re reality is and at some point Leroy might uh bring this up is that we we do develop goals for each year and so that's an opportunity for us to basically say okay it's our priority for uh, uh 2022 to focus in on x or y or q uh and certainly though i i like the idea of the uh, timely environmental topics because i think whenever you come up with a plan you still have to have the flexibility to kind of deal with things that come up you know and so uh, I, I think uh, there, there's nothing really magic about this, I don't think. It's just that uh, any of us as commissioners can raise an issue, uh, discuss it. We can form a committee if that's a good path. Uh, certainly things that we know are important, we can put into our goals for the next year or uh, things come up. We can, uh, like we're talking about Lake Lansing now, uh, you know, decide what, if anything, we can do some of this i think is just helpful to kind of uh try to find out what's going on uh but let me bring this back before we talk about flooding to uh, uh valerie or anybody else okay we, we've talked about what happened in lake lansing is there anything valerie that you would like to propose or anybody else for that matter related to that issue as next steps well i i guess two things come to mind one is that i i covered like, I mean, it, I was taking that old report, the, the Lake Lansing Management Report and took three things from it to, to say, could we look at these ordinances? Cause they do speak to, you know, the lake as well as the flooding that we're gonna have more of. And, um, you know, the, the, you know, all the topics that we're talking about, but, um, you know, maybe I'd like to see us take one, uh, even maybe the, you know, the um, pervious surfaces, like within the watershed area, you know, anybody that's building a new sidewalk or drive, you know, or, or uh, yeah, driveway or um, patio, um, somehow use blocks or, or something, that, you know, other than a big sheet of concrete that's gonna race the water right down into the lake before it has a chance to percolate in the ground. Um, I, I don't, I mean, obviously there's a lot there and a lot that have to be discussed and considered, but to get something on its way, um, I think would be very helpful. And then, it, then we'd understand the process better and what we need for other things. I know there's a whole litany of stuff in the green infrastructure that everybody's real excited about, you know, uh, trying to bring it to life. Um, and that's, you know, that's certainly one area, but that is one area I think that would really help the lake, or at least the Lake Lansing watershed area. Um, I know that there's an overlay district. I'm not really sure how planning has it set up or does it have to be for all of Meridian or I, I don't know. I mean, those are all a lot of questions. Well, you know, I know the, uh, uh, and the, 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 for the December meeting, we'll be talking about green infrastructure. Oh. Uh, you know, and I, I believe, Cliff is going to join us, or isn't that right, Leroy? That's kind of planned for December. Um, the idea is to get some feedback from Giannis and Tim Schmidt, the director, uh, on the kind of a laundry list of options that uh, Cliff had suggested. I'm not sure if Cliff can join us or not, but 
um, we really have an amazing opportunity to just kind of follow up on what Valerie is suggesting is look at what are some of the low hanging fruit, uh, some code changes that may not require a whole lot of effort. In fact, maybe it's just removing obstacles to doing smart things in future developments. So um, Cliff is interested in getting that sort of practical feedback from people over the feet on the ground. And uh, Tim has promised to, to take a look at it in the next few weeks and share his thoughts. Um, Cliff is really interested in sort of the a planner's perspective because we're kind of taking the leadership in the region here. Um, unfortunately, Cliff is leaving Tri-County, but he did get a job with East Lansing. So our sister city, he'll be an advocate um, and a um, good resource person on an ongoing basis. But unfortunately, we're going to lose him on the regional well, well, Leroy, do you know uh, the the issue that Val raised about the, uh, you know, is will that be kind of one of the the topics discussed in December then? Yeah, permeable payment pavement is in there. I share the um, the draft okay. in the chat. Um, unfortunately, it's a fairly large document, but you can get a sense of what some of the ideas that came through on that are. And um, okay. Super. Uh, John, you, you, I said I had two things and I'll be quick and I really appreciate you asking and giving me the space to um, to express this. The other one was the uh, seeds of it came out of the green dialogue from this morning and that is that there's so many different players around the lake, different entities, it would be wonderful just to get them together, not only the different uh, departments within the township, but you know, MSU has a presence and certainly the county has a huge presence. Um, I don't know if some meeting could be convened at a, you know, at a high enough level that, you know, high enough people would come so that we could, um, so that everybody could talk about their piece of it and maybe, you know, maybe come up with some broader solutions because it is complicated. And, and as we all know, in, in situations where it's not clear who has responsibility, but there's a lot of people involved in it that are principal players, it just, it just gets Keep the can just keeps getting kicked one way and, and the other and nothing happens. So, who, who, do you, who do you see? I mean, that sounds like a good idea. Who do you see as convening the meeting? Well, I it could be you, <laughs> or would what you do you think, uh, Mr. Steika would be willing to to do something in conjunction with the uh, uh, with the environmental committee and the land preservation committee and the, the you know in our um um uh. Kurt Armbruster's, um, you know, the Lake Lansing Advisory Council, well, and then would the would the Lake Lansing Advisory Council be a logical group to convene, or is, isn't that? Um, I don't think they've had the benefit of all this discussion that you know that we've had. Um, yeah, well, and I don't know, Courtney. Do you have any suggestions for us about who uh, might uh, be an appropriate convener? You know, I. I appreciate everything you're bringing, Valerie. This is very important. And I think um, I could certainly talk to the supervisor and ask for his opinion. Um, I, I'm not terribly familiar on how that would work, um, but I can certainly ask him that, you know, that this issue was brought up. We'd like to discuss more. We'd like to, you know, converge all the stakeholders together. What would be your guidance on how to do that? I could I could ask that for sure. That would be wonderful. Yeah, that sounds like a, a next logical step to me. I, I think he would have, uh, uh, yeah, uh, some wisdom on that topic because uh, I think, like you've indicated, Val. I mean, you, in order to get the the, the proper actors there, uh, it's important who kind of pulls the meeting together. Uh, so that's uh, okay. I think we've got our two next steps kind of figured out and. Uh, also in these timely environmental topics, uh, I think Kendra had raised the issue of flooding. So uh, yeah, flooding's uh, an issue. And I, I had mentioned in the Green Dialogue this morning, I just read that uh, apparently we got some money uh, in the township. So there's been some flooding in Grand River and Okemos Road and some of the uh, road work now is gonna raise it two feet, which apparently will uh, certainly help with the flooding. So, uh, but uh, any, Kendra, did you have anything specific in mind when you mentioned flooding or? Yes, I, I was just thinking about like talking about it, um, you know, as a group, but, um, you know, what are the things that people can do to 
help, you know, their individual properties? What, what are the simple things people can do? What are the simple don'ts not to do? Um, you know, I'm certainly looking at, you know, obviously, you know, look at the kind of big like things like grading, different kinds of things like that. But then how does like things like natural vegetation, raiding right gardens, you know, how do those, you know, um, buffers, how do all of those things help, you know, and that, that kind of goes along with the wetland plan. But I think it's like a multitude of things that we need to look at to assist people in relationship to flooding, because I mean, we just got three inches of rain last week. I mean, every month that we've come together, we've had major rains, you know, and so I mean, since June, anyway, like, in our rain garden that we have, we have this like little detention, you know, pond. I don't know how big it is, but, you know, I mean, it has not been empty since June, you know, that's how much rain we have gotten. And so I think it's um, our duty as environmental commission to, to pay attention to this and let the public know that we care and um, we might have some options and ideas of things to do. Yeah. Courtney. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I 100% agree with Kendra that there's uh, individual uh, responsibility. Um, I know some of the conversations I've had as a board um, and also on um, the Zoning Board of Appeals, just, and maybe this is something the Environmental Con Commission can work on, but I feel like we over park. So when it comes to imperv imperviable surface, um, I'm wondering if it's not something if you worked with Director Schmidt on parking as associated as an ordinance when it comes to development. Um, and I know that's a, a large contributor to um, to the you know the flooding is that we have nowhere for these this water to go. We're working on drains at a at a township level. Um, we're working on individual properties as a wetland level, but I'm wondering if that's not something we may want to pursue either now or in the future on um, that ordinance and how many parking spaces per, um, per development is required. Um, get, you know, and, and thinking about, and Valerie and I had this discussion about maybe, you know, as, as we progress in, in a walkable community, maybe um, uh, I guess, um, uh, thinking about and or um, encouraging maybe some electronic bikes or electronic vehicles and reducing the amount of vehicles on the road, the vehicles amount that need to park and thinking about um, on a, a bigger level, and this is, this is a big discussion, but thinking on a bigger level, how do we reduce the amount of impervious surface in Marine Township? And a lot of that is, is, dictated by code um it's it's been a it's been a um on my on my mind for quite some time and i think that the commission may have some opportunity to look at that now that we have a new director looking at some um ordinances if, if we want to look at some of these other ordinances as well um so those are my thoughts on that i i think we have some opportunity there in addition to what i'm just saying on a on an individual level no go ahead yeah, thanks. Um, in response to uh, Trustee Wazinski's comment, um, the Planning Commission uh, recently considered an application for an um, amendment to a special use permit that led to the uh, construction of the building that is uh, 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 now at Northwinden and Grand River Hobby Lobby. And uh, the proposal is, is for a, a, a building in that uh, parking lot. And uh, the applicant uh, mentioned in the application that uh, they thought that the original uh, parking requirement was excessive and they didn't see any impact on the existing businesses by replacing a bunch of parking spaces with uh, a building. Um, and I did ask the uh, uh, director Schmidt if, if the parking minimum parking requirement is on his agenda and, and he was very enthusiastically uh, uh, supportive of revisiting uh, our minimum parking requirements. Um, and part of the mixed use plan unit development and um, uh, ordinance um, review is trying to uh, encourage shared parking among businesses. So you're not requiring every business to have all the parking it's gonna need on its biggest day, recognizing that different businesses have different big days and big, different big times of day. 
and making it possible to drive from one business to another. So those things are, are definitely on the on the planning commission's agenda and the planning department's agenda. And I think uh, support from this commission will be helpful. We do have a question about sort of the rules about, I mean, so, you know, this, uh, the GSI draft has um, a whole section on permeable pavement, but uh, I think what you end up having to do if you want to actually, especially for new builds or even repaving, um, when you want to convince somebody to do it, their first response is, well, that stuff costs 10 times as much and it can't bear loads and you have to vacuum it every uh, twice a year. Uh, and those are sort of the, you know, uh, the, the stock responses. And I, the question is, the technology has presumably evolved there are multiple versions of permeable pavement, uh, permeable surfaces, let's say. Um, it doesn't have to look like asphalt that's slightly different. And, uh, and I was just wondering, you know, are there any communities that have actually um, required it in new builds or whatever? Does anybody know anything about that? I don't, I'd, I'd be interested in searching it out. Um... I know that there's all different kinds of pavers, including the kind that have been around for really a long time that allow the grass to grow up in it. Right. Does anybody know where an example of that is? Yes, the perfect one is at the, um, at the- uh, on Miss you surplus. Well, there's that too. No, but that's the, isn't that the regular asphalt kind? Oh, you're talking about um, the Quaker Meeting House? Yeah, I'm talking about the Quaker Meeting House, yeah. Uh, which is the blocks in the ground. And I, I sort of, you know, randomly ride my bicycle by there and go and look. And it's been there for many years. I mean, maybe not 20, but maybe probably pretty close to 10. And it's not heaved or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's now, of course, with COVID, it's a little, it's got a, got a few more sprouts of grass growing between it, but it's a, but the block itself is nice and flat. Um, yeah, I, I'm actually, I'd like to know how to do that in my own driveway. <laughs> where, where is the Quaker? Where is where is that? It's on Turner uh, Street, yeah. uh, just uh, I want to say north of Grand River, about a Talking block and a half. Lansing. Yeah, Old, Anna, go, Anna, yeah, Anna, go ahead. Old Town. Old Town. Yeah. Go ahead, Anna. Well, now I, I got sucked away in the next conversation. I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that happens. <laughs> if it, I'll put my hand down and I'll, if it comes back to me, I'll raise it again. Yeah. <laughs> I just um, encourage people to look, to read the document that Ned just referred to um, that I posted here. Um, if I can email you a smaller version of it, but there's, it's based on a, a, a template that was designed nationally well thought out research citing lots of communities and examples around the country to doing not just permeable pavement, but reducing all par parking requirements, re reducing parking requirements altogether. Um, so there's just lots of innovative, but also thoughtful recommendations that are ripe for the picking. <laughs> oh, I, I do remember my question. Do we have in our ordinances, does anyone know, do we have trade-offs? Like if we have a certain amount of bike parking, then we can take out a certain amount of car spaces? I don't think we have that kind of a trade-off built in. We we added bike parking minimums to the car parking minima, but okay. I don't recall there being a, a tr a, any discussion of a trade-off. Okay. Well, you know, I thought, I know that that's what some cities are, are doing and uh, seemingly successfully. And I could add just from the Zoning Board of Appeals when I was um, serving on that, that it's not necessarily a trade-off. Um, there's nothing in the ordinance saying if you do this, you do that. However, variances are granted given some of those conditions. Um, okay. But should it be more, um, or could it be more um, prescribed? That might be an option. Okay. Kendra, go ahead. Um, I'm wondering, Bill mentioned, uh, or Anna was asking, and Bill answered, like, um, I know that uh, the, the, oh, goodness gracious, I'm losing words. Um, the code of ordinances are being reviewed, um, right? And so 
do we get an opportunity to look at those um, before like that gets set in stone to kind of review this and have input and how does that process work? Um, if you're referring to the specific part of the ordinance, the mixed use plan unit development ordinance, which is currently being revised, um, we don't have a formal role in that process. In other words, the planning commission doesn't send the a proposed change to every other commission or board who might uh, be interested. Uh, ultimately, the Board of Trustees approves any change to the ordinances. Um, and it's kind of my job as liaison to the Planning Commission uh, to keep the Environmental Commission informed of those proposed changes going forward. And if I, I was going to save this till later, but I, I, I'd like to fall on my sword here for a moment. Um, at last night's uh, uh, Board of Trustees meeting, um, it became evident that the, the, the comb with which I reviewed that revised ordinance was not sufficiently fine-toothed. <laughs> and somewhere along the line, I missed uh, a, a, a proposed amendment that uh, effectively would have relaxed Environmental Commission review of wetland impacts during the MUPUD process. And I believe that was motivated by a desire to speed the process by uh, folks who, who believe that we're not getting what we want from the ordinance because there's too, there's too much red tape. But uh, there, yeah, there were two sets of strikeouts and, and one of them appeared to um, uh, abrogate the role of the Environmental Commission in reviewing wetland impacts on an MUPUD. Fortunately, other uh, uh, trustees were <laughs> much keener eyed than me and found that and, and expressed a strong desire not to see that change, to, to retain uh, Environmental Commission review of, of a wetland use permit, even in the case of an MUPD. So, mea culpa. I just want to make a historical comment. Uh, it, it, that, that accusation of the Environmental Commission slowing things down has been around for a long time. However, it was almost always the other way around. It was that uh, um, permits didn't, wouldn't come to us and then they'd come to us say, you know, just a few days uh, too late and so then they'd be asking for us to have special meetings and things like that at odd times and so that uh, ultimately it came down to it wasn't so much the planner's fault as the as the developer's faults uh, usually but the point is you know it's not really fair to say a system that's you know in place and well defined uh, where basically once the permit comes in we review it you know at the next meeting but that involves uh, historically, typically walking the property and so forth. So it's not something where you can just say, okay, here's the paper the day before and then do the review. Uh, so yeah, that, that, uh, that so-called acceleration of the process has a lot of danger in it. And I think I'm glad you, however it got caught, I'm glad it got caught. Well, let's uh, move along in our discussion because uh, we still have wetland education to talk about. And Leroy, you put on the agenda uh, the fact that we have a new commissioner application. Was that just kind of for our information? Yeah, we don't currently have an opening necessarily, but um, um, yeah, we do have interest. And um, this person, Beverly Nettles, expressed interest in several commissions. And I just wanted to alert you to that. I don't know if anyone knows Miss Nettles. She's a um, fairly popular person in some circles. Um, related to this issue, um, we do have reappointments coming up. Um, all of our student positions are one year. And so we need to know from Annika, Bernadette, and Luca if you would like to be reappointed. Um, I also will share what I, my understanding of everyone's appointments are I so if you um, I'm not sure that the, the list of expiration dates is totally accurate but I'm going to share that in the in the chat window actually let me just quickly share my screen if that's okay <clears throat> go ahead although why don't you just uh, uh, 
send a note to anybody whose term is expiring and, and uh, you know, that would kind of prompt them to make a decision, uh, try to get, ask for reappointment or whatever, right? Yeah. That sounds good. I, my understanding is it's, it's only Luca, Bernadette and Annika, um, but I will, I will also send out the current expiration list. So, oh, yeah. okay. So you don't think any of us are expiring at the end of this year? I don't think so. Okay. Um, um, okay, but if we if you find that we are, just send that note to that person so that can be person can make a decision and uh, whether to, you know, retire or get re or ask to be reappointed. Sounds good. Okay, let's if, move on. Let's um, move on to uh, uh, now, Valerie. You had a question or comment. Well, it, yeah, just to comment really quickly, we had talked about this in a couple other instances, but we're talking about ordinances, and I wonder if we can't consider maybe um, asking the board to consider um, nine members instead of seven members on the environmental committee. It seems to me like there's lots of work to go around and um, you know, it was suggested before. That would be an ordinance change, I believe. We right. Change the ordinance. So, so could, could I, let's see if this will work. Can I move that uh, we send a suggestion to the board to consider uh, nine members versus seven members? Oh, yeah, uh, well, eleven members, including two student members, right? Okay, and then the and then the student members on top, yeah. Yeah, and the student members are full are members of the commission. So I I think you're asking for yeah. a, oh, an okay. additional additional two commissioners, right? Yes, yeah, the right okay. the three the three year versions. Okay, uh, well let's let's put that on the uh, 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 uh let's see while we have new business, uh, let's talk about. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. We're still, okay. This is still under new business. So I guess you've, you've raised an issue of new business, uh, whether we should increase the, uh, uh, commission to, uh, 11 members. Does anybody have any thoughts on that? Or maybe, maybe it's best to kind of have everybody think about it and talk about it at the next meeting. Well, do Robert's rules say you need a second and then you discuss, or are we Robert's rules? Are we? Oh yeah. Yeah. If you actually want to make a motion, uh, but I'm just suggesting too that because uh, this, you know, is a brand new topic, that yeah. we might want to put it on the agenda for the next meeting and give us all a little time to think about it, if that's sure. agreeable. Uh, One thing that might help is to go back and look at when we last uh, revised our uh, uh, procedures to include more student members. But I, I think typically in the township, and Courtney, correct me if I'm, I got this wrong. Uh, a commission like the Environmental Commission would uh, formally adopt a resolution recommending specific change to ordinance language. And that would then, if it passed, would be uh, forwarded to the, uh, to the township board and it would go on their agenda as a, a proposed ordinance change. That's correct. Yeah, yeah that, that sounds great. And uh, this, uh, the student members are well, I didn't mean to to denigrate the at all. Um, so yes, no, I, 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 the reason the reason I suggest that is that um, we tried to do that through more or less a, a change in our our bylaws, mm -hmm. but without uh, formally changing the ordinance, it, it doesn't really have the the effect. So it might also be an opportunity to more to formalize that aspect as well. So I do think it's a, a discussion that we uh, should engage agent and make sure we're, we're of a common mind before we uh, to send something strong up to the board. Hey, well, Laura, would you put on the agenda for our next meeting? No, I will not. <laughs> no, um, sure. Okay, we, we but, need uh, to discuss it, yeah. Um, I, I did want to just um, tell or ask Luca, Bernadette, and Annika to just let me know if you'd like to be reappointed now, just officially pent this set out, or if you have any comments now, um, don't wanna waste your time, but um, we might not see you again. Go ahead. Uh, you wanted uh, uh, for us to tell you if we wanted to be appointed now or uh, over email? Now or over email, either one, to reappoint it for another year, starting in January. Uh, I, I would like to be reappointed then. Awesome. Uh, I'd like to be reappointed as well. Fantastic. 
Um, would it be advisable, um, since I'm probably not going to like go to college near this area, like I won't be in Meridian Township anymore for like that long of a time, um, would it be advisable for me to ask for reappointment even if I'm not like in the township? I, I like the idea of if you want to ever want to tune in, anyone is welcome. But if you're thinking you want to open up a space for another student, I think that would be uh, good to let us know sooner than later. And okay, uh, I'll probably not run the reappointment then. Okay, great. Um, thank you, thank you all for uh, sure. just voicing your perspectives, and and John for keeping us on track on the agenda. Well, let's move on to uh, our old business, which is wetland education. Uh, Kendra, would you like to get us started? Sure. Um, so we met like 85% of our goals for the out, um, wetland outreach campaign for October, which is phenomenal. We um, got a wetland letter out to, I think, what Roy said, 1,400 folks, um, uh, along with the, the brochure. We received a lot of positive feedback. Um, and, you know, mostly about um, the buffers and not being, you know, aware of them and how they might be able to help with that and a um, lot of good, good feedback. So I want to thank everyone involved with, with that. Um, really grateful for Roy's efforts and for Emma's efforts and Courtney's efforts and, um, you know, everyone at the, at the township and everyone on the environmental commission here and land preservation advisory board, everyone who's been, you know, working on this. So I'm really grateful for everyone's help. Um, so we had that sent out multiple ways. Um, and then, you know, uh, we basically were looking at like, how do we not necessarily create a ton more work for people? Um, you know, what is Emma doing? What is Leroy doing? And, and how can we, you know, utilize what's actually going on? And then, um, uh, uh, you know, form a plan based on that. And so um, Le Leroy did his fall cleanup um, uh, information with his eight R's, including, you know, um, restoring the wetland buffer, which is fantastic. Um, you know, uh, Emma did some uh, work days out in the land preserves, and also she did a presentation along with Human Lee um, from the Land Preservation Advisory Board um, to the MSU Extension Community, uh, Conservation Corps Community. And, um, let me tell you some cool fun facts I learned from that. Um, that one, and, I, and I'm going to ask the students actually to help here eventually with, with some of this. Um, one, if we we're looking for our biggest bank, you know, in a sense of helping with climate, um, wetlands have a remarkable capacity to sequester carbon um, despite covering less area than all ecosystems. The estimated total carbon storage of wetlands globally is 225 billion metric tons, or the equivalent of carbon emissions from roughly 189 million cars every year. If you can think about that, like that is what wetlands can offer us. And I know it's very difficult um, for people to kind of think about that and really grasp that, but like, you know, that's 20 um, to 30% globally of, um, Oh crap, I'm gonna mess that up. Uh, hold on a second. Um, uh, so you'll, their function is um, carbon storage of 20 to 30% globally of carbon. So, uh, sorry, I'm messing it up again. 20 to 30% glo global soil carbon storage. So, I mean, that's phenomenal. So I'm wondering if the students might even be able to help us get out one of those fun facts, even though it's a little hard to say, but like, 189 million cars every year. I mean, that's remarkable. And so, you know, we have to manage our wetlands well. And, um, you know, poorly wetland managed wetlands can actually um, be sources of more carbon when they're destroyed, drained, encroached upon by development. And so, and it can take years to, you know, um, for a constructed well wetland to fully mature and then offer what we need. So I just want folks to take that and perspective, because I think if you think about 189 million cars every year, I mean, that's pretty remarkable that that's what the, the uh, wetlands offer us. Another fun fact, um, when we're talking about relationship to um, flooding, is that one acre of wetlands can store up to 1 to 1.5 million gallons of water. I mean, and, and so if we can think about those fun facts for a moment, and I just would wonder if I could challenge the students um, to even, uh, you know, come up with some 
images for us in relationship to these fun facts. I can send them out to you so that we can send them out to the community. Um, and the reason I'm asking is because um, typically, um, uh, sometimes you guys are, um, can be more creative <laughs> um, and uh, with images perhaps maybe than some of us, unless someone else wants to volunteer. Um, but I'm just gonna ask, you know, maybe if you would be willing to assist with that, um, be really grateful um, for that. And then additionally, you know, we have our November goals. And again, you know, with the whole kind of build back the buffer, work on this flooding, you know, take um, into consideration the issues with Lake Lansing. So I know I've said a lot of words, um, but that's kind of where we're at. You're muted, John. Thank you. <laughs> any any questions or comments related to wetland education? I just briefly wanted to say um, thank you, Kendra, for the recap. And I love the idea of fun facts and sort of clear little messages and graphics that we can share with the public in our various circles, our classmates. Our, um, we, Courtney and Kendra and Emma and Brandy and I have met a couple of times to talk about a wetland outreach plan. And there's a, my latest draft hot off the press for today is, is in the um, chat window. So if you've got anything you wanna add or you have any questions or suggestions, this is not a, an approved version, but it includes a lot of ideas from, from Courtney, Kendra and Emma and some of you as well. So um, if you have a chance to take a look at it, please do and give us your feedback. Great. Kendra. I just wanna say thanks Leroy for putting that together. I know I emailed. Um, and just so you know, like we meet on a pretty regular basis. So, you know, there's been a lot of meetings that we've had a lot of time and energy, um, a lot of resources that have been put into this. So, you know, this has been a year long campaign um, and that we're looking at not only protecting our wetlands and looking at the services that they provide for us, but looking at these issues related to flooding, um, which impacts like Lansing and, you know, all this other kind of stuff. So it's kind of like all encompassing kind of like what part of our mission is. So I appreciate everyone's help. And Courtney's for allocating some, some actually real dollars to help support printing and mailing and things like that. So Courtney, hats off. Well, we're up to the uh, agenda uh, item where we have commissioner and staff updates. And if I understand our new process now, basically this is an opportunity to highlight things that you might've put into the updates that uh, became part of the consent agenda, or it could be something else uh, that you'd like to kind of uh, uh, make us aware of or comment on. So uh, I'm just gonna go around the uh, who I see. So I'm gonna start Leroy since you're right to the whatever uh you want to uh, do you have a staff update that you want to highlight anything or mention anything you're muted <laughs> try and keep it to 10 seconds here i had a nice <laughs> meeting with the climate action club with hazlitt high school they're interested in the green infrastructure project so i'm hoping that we can uh kind of get that green infrastructure grants going soon and um they're interested in meeting with students from Okemos too. So if any of you students would like to sort of partner up and talk about a collaborating, I think they would enjoy that a lot. Well, Lori, let me ask a question. Uh, the, the, there were $10,000 allocated for this, this coming year, correct? And was there any money left over from last year that would be part of the pot? I'm not sure how that would, um, if that would overflow into the next year, I think that would be great, um, but it's not a huge amount. We did spend some of that money on the wetland mailing. I think there might be $1,200 or so left, which is not insignificant, but we don't have a whole lot of time left this year. Do you, would that money roll over, Courtney? Do you know? Sorry, wrong button. <laughs> I am not, I'm not confident on how the the money at the township works um, is whether or not it rolls over. Um, I will say that the additional 10,000, you know, is still there. So if we've used some to accommodate um, the addition, the, the new FY22, the funding is there. So I, I can check with uh, manager Walsh to see how that works, but that's a really good point, um, Chief 
uh, Commissioner Sarver, like, did we spend it all and can we roll it over um, and how that works? I can check on that for sure. Thank you. That would, that would be helpful. And, and Leroy, what's your, how are you uh, soliciting proposals? Well, Rose was on our committee. You were on our committee. If anyone else would like to be on our green infrastructure grants committee, um, I just want to distribute the, the latest draft or the, the, the draft from last year and see if anyone has any changes to that. Otherwise we can get it out. So um, Luca, Bernadette, um, and Annika, do you have any um, ideas for projects or contacts in your school, or maybe the Earth Club? Love to get that out as, just as soon as people want to start thinking about it. Anything related to green infrastructure, which is pretty broad. And so. is there, is any of the commissioners, would you like to join Leroy and I on this committee? Does any, anybody have an interest? Oh, oh, Courtney, okay, super. Thank you. It's nice to have three on a committee. <laughs> and, and in case it's very have, exciting. No, I, 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 would, I would love to. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Roy, anything else? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, I'm gonna pass on myself. And then uh, Ned, you're next on my screen. Actually, I, if I look distracted, it's it's because I slightly am. I, I we did in fact get a uh, relatively recent update on the green blue green algae thing. Um, oh. I'm trying to find it, and I uh, I see it on. You want it's from start? Kurt from Armbruster, yeah. uh, but it's in. Um, the only place I can find it is in next door and it's probably posted in some better place. Anyway. You want us um, to come back to you? Well, I'm just gonna let you know that it says that they did further testing. And this is this, at least this posting is 12 hours ago. I don't know when the testing exactly happened. Um, and it says the microcystin, which is the toxin uh, appears to have um, dissipated. So, um, that's a good thing. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I might. You might. It might be better to come back to me because it's it goes on for a little while longer. Yeah. Okay. We'll come anyway, back. To you. Tom. Yeah. Uh, nothing really to add, other than just to um, uh, highlight that the green team, the next uh, event that we're having is a winter coat gear drive at Marketplace, and that's happening on Saturday, uh, November 20th. And also for those who, of you who may be interested, I just signed up a couple of days ago that Eagle is having a recycling webinar uh, coming up on November 15th. Uh, I think it's a one hour starting at 11 o'clock if you're interested in that. Thank you, Tom. Valerie. Yep. Um, well, uh, I guess uh, Anna and I, I think Anna's going to give a report on it, but we're working on the, I don't know, there's like a working title, I guess, food to composting. We, we're kind of fact finding. Um, and we, we for sure are going to have Greater Lansing Food Bank, a couple people from it at our next one. I'm hopeful Tom will, will be there as well. Um, maybe Leroy, um, everybody's invited and um, I'll just leave it at that. So Anna can fill it in. <laughs> Bill? Yeah, um, I mentioned earlier the um, drive through bank um, proposed for the uh, parking lot at, at Hobby Lobby uh, considered by the, the planning commission. Besides the fact that uh, the applicant uh, uh, cited a, a excessive parking capacity in that lot. The site plan that's that's been submitted would actually reduce the impervious surface by providing much more generous landscaping than is currently in that lot. So from that perspective, uh, that's a win. And also uh, last night, it wouldn't have gotten to the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority yet, but there was discussion at the township board last night about the uh, expiration of a timeline for demolition at Pine Village, which is the Hazlitt Four Corners site. So they're wrestling with the intricacies of, of uh, uh, how to how to encourage that project to move forward um, under the Brownfield uh, redevelopment um, uh, arrangement.
planning stuff. Agreement. So yeah, like it doesn't get much more complicated than that in township government, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep watching for them to start knocking the place down, and uh, yeah, not, not nothing much is happening over there. Maluka. Nothing new to report for me. Anna. Thank you. So as Valerie mentioned, we are working with a group on uh, food to compost. Um, I will also mention, so I attended the Michigan Good Food Charter Conference, a virtual conference. Um, so one of the thing, the other things that I'm involved with is this, I'm on the, I'm one of the committee members for the Michigan Good Food Charter and have been uh, working with them on, they have a number of statewide recommendations on sustainability um, in the food system and how to, you know, in, um, to increase sustainability and reduce greenhouse emissions uh, within our food systems. So it was good. Uh, the charter is actually getting re um, was getting updated after I guess it's the 10 year anniversary of the charter. So they're updating some of the statewide goals. So that was I mean we talked about a, a number of different. So you know those are kind of two separate separate things that I'm involved with. But we did talk about the Michigan Good Food Charter also at our, our at our meeting and and some uh, possibilities for doing some uh, food. Uh, collection or what what uh, us, we in the food world called called gleaning, so getting edible food um, into food pantries or to the food bank versus so generally the food value chain. I, I won't get too far into this, but you know the best thing to do is to move edible food to people and then to animals and then we get down to composting. So we're really looking at the the whole food value chain there and what are the opportunities for greater sustainability and then what are the opportunities regionally and with within the township. So we've just really started some conversations to get an idea of you know, what, what is the current infrastructure, who's doing what, and where is their interest to go from here? One of the things I wanted to bring up to the commission uh, is, I, I don't know if it would be helpful for myself or for someone else to provide some, some background, some education on, on, on our food system and the impact on the environment. I, I think, you know, particularly food waste, I mean, there's things, you know, um, Kendra mentioned, you know, with wetlands, the, you know, vehicle emissions, and it's, it's something like, I think, 37 million vehicles worth of emissions are just, um, or greenhouse gas emissions are just related to food waste alone in the U.S. So, uh, and then, of course, there's other huge stats on the amount of water that is wasted, the amount of farming, I think it's like 20% of all farming fertilizer, the landfill content, the methane um, emitted from food waste. So uh, I think, you know, it, it could be potentially be interesting um, or helpful for, for this commission to have a better understanding of, of the environmental impacts of, I mean, maybe more broadly about the food system and what the state, um, some of the state collaboratives are interested in doing around sustainability of the food system. And then maybe particularly related to, to food waste since we've been talking about that more as, as a working group. Well, Anna, I, th I think we should plan on doing that. I think it would be a, a great topic uh, for one of our green themes to have you or some other uh, speaker that you identify to uh, kind of do that sort of overview. The other thing too you, you, your group may want to consider is that uh, I don't believe our climate sustainability plan has any mention of food at all. And so you may want to give some thought to uh, what uh, maybe should be included in the, the climate sustainability plan. I think that was an area that just got missed basically. That's a great suggestion. That. I, I assume, I, I know I've asked this before, um, I assume that you've um, talked to Dana Kirk and you're aware of the anaerobic digester on campus and so forth that takes the, um, the food waste from Brody and uh, ferments it basically into biogas to generate electricity. Um, he, he gave a presentation at the CAS um, meeting, the one meeting that they did have the Capital Area Sustainability Partnership, the regional effort. So, and he's part of that, but they've not had a second meeting yet. So he's 
and and people and Anna and I are both on cast and the the chairperson of cast has asked to be on our our group so we he he's in the I don't know I, yeah we know about him and um well, I, I only mention him because I think he's, you know, he's a tremendous resource, but more yeah. broadly, I mean, speaking as a chemist, uh, the, uh, one of the issues with, with compost and, and that relates to the anaerobic digester too, is that compost that, that uh, sort of doesn't get turned over and aerated ultimately does what organic matter in the bottom of swamps does, which is to make um, swamp gas, which is methane, and methane's um, 26 times more powerful than carbon dioxide on a per carbon atom basis uh, as a greenhouse gas. And so actions that actually take the organic matter and ferment it into a, a thing like a fuel, like, like the anaerobic digester does, uh, actually are um, themselves protective of the atmosphere, even though it doesn't change the amount of carbon, it's released in a much less noxious way. It's still CO2, but it's, uh, but it's not nearly as bad from a global warming point of view. Um, right. So, and the thing is, of course, it's happening in the bottom of the swamps all the time, but it also happens in unaerated um, composts. Like, you know, you, you look at those landfills and they have these pipes coming out. That's, that's to let the methane out. Yeah. And 10% of that methane is due to food waste. So, um, right. Ned, you make a very good point, and that is one of the reasons that we're looking at. I guess the other thing I forgot to mention is another um, tactic that we're looking at is, is source reduction. So that's really, of course, the best thing to do is just to reduce the amount of, um, well, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say it's the best thing to do, but um, source reduction of, of food waste, but you know, then going into things like gleaning, so moving food to to people that need food, because certainly we, you know, there's food security in, in our township as well, and so we're wasting 40% of, you know, the average household is wasting 40% of their food, which, um, you know, there's a lot of households that, that could also use additional food, so, you know, are Absolutely. there opportunities to... to yeah. Well, thank you, Anna. Yep. That. You're up. Courtney, you're up, yep. Oh, thank you. Um, I will just commend Anna for this effort because I, as even as just a resident and a parent, and Luca might be able to <laughs> speak to this, I am adamantly against wasting food. So at the end of the week, we have a potluck of whatever it may be, and they're not always excited about it. But I just have this... Uh, inability to throw away food and it's because of that and not uh, so i appreciate that and i would 100 100 support any effort that you move towards working you know through food waste or ugly foods or anything like that um i don't have much to say um chief Sar sarver uh other than um on our october 5th um bridget did present the um hazlitt middle school um, green grants well received the board was very excited I think it's really important that we bring these things back to the board so if if the commission's okay I would love to invite um, our our presenters tonight to um, it just shows it, it was amazing what they have done with I run grants at the the Department of Health and Human Services and the amount of money that we gave them and the amount of outcome that came out of that is just it's it's incredible so i think that that's really important so if you're all um in in favor of that i wouldn't i would love to invite them okay thank you um, uh kendra mentioned the wetland letter um and the brochure i um also let the board know what the positive all the positive impacts on that and and that they appropriated funds towards our educational campaign and that we've already with the first um endeavor have already gotten so much positive impact so thank you to Leroy. thank you to emma thank you to kendra thank you to the commission um I, it's really we've gotten um a lot of uh 
feedback with regards to the buffer, not knowing that that was a thing and it's really important and um, we understand that now. So I just wanted to shout out to that. Um, the last thing I wanna say is that, um, um, it, and we've talked about this a little bit today, but the, uh, the MUPUD, the mixed use plan use development ordinance that was discussed at the last board meeting, which was yesterday, um, and that the environmental commission was striked from the ordinance as a reviewer on the ordinance. I will say that um, that was not my doing, that I had a commissioner that came to me um, that brought that to my attention. Um, and I thank uh, Ms. Krzyzewski for saying that because I, I missed it and I apologize, just like John, you had said and other people that that's so very important and that it was a unanimous vote on the board, straw vote, that it is imperative that the Environmental Commission, given that we have all these climate change issues coming up and that they're just increasing, that we be a part of those types of ordinances and those types of developments. So um, I appreciate all the input from the Environmental Commission anytime. Please, as a board member, let me know if there's something that I'm missing or something that I need to know. It's um, imperative. I would have missed that. So I appreciate that. And that's my report. Well, thank you, Courtney. Uh, Bernadette, you're up. Um, there's not too many updates. We have been running a clothing drive, though. Um, I believe we're going to give it to, like, a local bank. But um, we're, like, trying to collect, like, people's old clothes. Um, so we're doing that. And then we're also making kind of, like, eco-friendly ads um, for our study halls because at OHS we kind of have this like study hall period once a week called flex um, which they like show videos of like happenings at the school so um, we've been making kind of like ads for those um, videos so um, yeah those are the two things we've been working on this month though. Oh, that's neat. Hey, Bernadette, uh, Bernadette are you sharing those at all with home TV? I wonder if they'd be interested. Um, I could ask Audrey or um, Anna, who are the presidents of that, about that. I mean, I I, I, I would think Home TV would uh, love to maybe see something like that that you've developed. Uh, uh, Kendra, I think we're up to you. Did I? Right. Um, yeah, so I, again, I would um, please ask the students. They might be able to assist with some um, neat graphics or images or something like that that might go with a couple of our fun facts. Um, I just think um, your brains work better in that category, most certainly than mine does. <laughs> and uh, Emma, you know, it, it's kind of Emma's to-do list, and I think everyone knows that Emma is phenomenal but overwhelmed, and so I'm kind of really asking on her behalf, really. Um, so if not for me, please do it for her. Um, and uh, um, and then last, um, I got a message from my husband who's really into environmental issues, and um, he has a depaving manual. If you for um, municipalities um, that he's been wanting me to share with everyone for a couple of months and I keep forgetting. Um, he sent me a text to say something. So given the conversation, you know, Valerie and Bill and Ned and everybody, Courtney, everyone's talking about here, um, I'll probably share that at some point in time as soon as I find it. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Audrey. Uh, for the wetland um, fun facts, where were you getting those? Were you getting those from the EPA? Like, where could I get them in writing, yeah. I guess? Because we, we have an Earth Club meet, meeting yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, NRC. Yep, and, and, and our, oh, I'm so tired. NDRC or NDC. I'm going to send it to you. Um, I'll NRDC. get it to you. Okay, thank you. Okay. NRDC, yeah. In our DC, yeah. Okay. I can't read very good. See what's going on in the stage of life I'm in right now. I, uh, <laughs> I looked it up um, when you said that. And I think there's a, I was looking at a, an EPA thing that this is functions and values of wetlands. Um, but uh, Anna Hicks, uh, who's the other co president, also did an article um, on wetlands for our school paper, but I need to read it still. So, excellent. Excellent. Annika, I don't think you've had a chance to say anything. Uh, yeah, no, please here. But I'm interested in doing the, um, so for the 
uh, wetlands like uh, facts should be like social media like in social media format or just like like a blog format um probably social media i'll get the information how about i send it out to you and um you you know again because i so not thinking as clearly as i want to at the current moment but how about i send it to you and um and get more input from emma and um do a that ask and be clear about it then thank you so much Great, appreciate thanks. it Hey, uh, we're back to you, Ned. Did you have anything you'd like to add? I to unmute. Oh. I wanted to finish the comments about the, the blue green algae and uh, there really wasn't much more to the report. It's, it just said that the uh, they had done uh, further testing more recently and the, the original tests came back, you know, positive. They did sort of a quick test and then they did a more a uh, complicated test, and that did confirm the the presence of the of the um, toxin in the samples from the 15th and the 20th of October. But now, the more recent samples have shown that it's um, more or less a non-detect, which means you know they they're not seeing it in the samples at all. And I guess that's fairly typical for the sort of cycle when we get into the cooler fall weather. That's um, that's how that's when this stuff clears up and normally so it's not it's not surprising but it's nice to know good news <laughs> by the way our cat our cat i have no idea if, you know we didn't witness it but our cat got very sick right around that time hmm. and they say that if uh if pets i mean it can kill people right, and pets uh if they drink the stuff uh when it happens to be at relatively high levels and it was in the original detect it was above uh you know levels of concern so uh, who knows? Who knows? She uh, she came back sort of in three or four days, but uh, but she was really just barely with us. It seemed like <clears throat> Good work. I have no That's idea if it had anything to do with it. Just very right. brief, very briefly. I just posted a summary of our meeting in the chat window. If you have anything to add to it, let me know. Okay, thank you. Thank did you. I miss? Did I miss anybody? I, I, you know, okay, I don't see any raised hands. Okay uh let's see i think we're up to public comments is there uh uh i guess samantha would know uh because i don't see anybody uh public on the screen uh do we have anybody who'd like to make public comments okay i guess not okay uh any uh would anybody like to make any parting words before we kind of uh adjourn I have, uh, I don't see any. Okay. Okay. Well, it looks like uh, we're very good discussion tonight and we're going to have a, I think a, a very interesting discussion at our December meeting too. So, uh, thank you all for attending and, uh, take care. <laughs>